today I have left the warm sanctity of my greenhouse to talk about uh, winter dormancy. Um, and not winter dormancy here in California where we have a fake winter, but places where they have a real winter, like in Minnesota, Maine, New Jersey even. If there's snow on the ground outside, how do you take care of your carnivorous plants in the winter time? We bought them all over the spring and summer. You want them to stay alive, but how are we going to do it? So there's a few different options for wintering carnivorous plants in areas like that. And areas like that are areas, areas that are colder than, let's say here in California, we would get 20 to 25 degrees some nights, warming back up above freezing usually during the day. And then we'll get occasional 15 degree days, probably about as cold as it ever, ever gets here. Um, so all, all temperate carnivorous plants, Venus flytraps, American pitcher plants, temperate sundews, they can all take those temperatures just fine. The water that uh, they're sitting in can freeze solid. Uh, that's totally fine. Freezing is no problem. Sub-zero freezing, it's colder than 15 over and over again and it's not warming up over, you know, during the day above freezing that's where you are gonna start losing some of these plants if it's really super cold like that over the winter. Um, I know some of our customers have been frustrated with that. And so we're really trying to teach you how to not lose plants over the winter. And of course, growing plants, you might lose a few things, but if you listen to this, you'll, you'll probably keep most of them. So the reason I'm standing in front of this big in-ground bog that we made is this is a really great way to grow a lot of carnivorous plants beautifully in a big display and also protect them from the cold. So we grow a ton of our plants. Weedy old Saracenia. Sometimes our plants get weedy too. Don't tell anybody. This is a willow tree. Anyway, this is a really, this is how we grow our plants here in little pots like this. And you can see it's pressed right up against the side of the pot. Here in California, where it doesn't get very cold, that's not a problem. But where if you live where it's really, really cold, it's going to create what we call side freeze. And so this thin pot is going to freeze right through the side and it's going to probably kill the roots in the crown because it just can't take that. These plants grow all the way up to Virginia in their native range. So they'll see plenty of cold, but they're always in the ground. They're not in little tiny plastic pots on your patio. So can't do that over the winter there without protecting them in some way. Uh, so you can bury in a bog like this. We just use a pond liner. We've done videos about it in the past, but we just use a pond liner and everything is planted in and so they can't freeze through the side. And so that's much better protection. More protection still is going to be mulching. So mulching is where you take like uh, some kind of plant matter usually, straw, old leaves, um, a heavy mulch can be like bark, that's probably not what you want to do, straw or old leaves, bury the whole bog, tops and all, you want to just bury everything down and they won't get any light but once the snow sits on top of that mulch it's actually going to insulate it and keep it from getting uh, very very cold like the air up above, it's gonna be way colder than the frozen uh, snow. They tell me. <laughs> we have a lot of experiences with snow here. Um, so that's a, good, that's a good method. The other thing is, move them. They do need to be outside for most of the year so they can get lots and lots of sun and they do need these cold winters. You can't skip this process. But you could bring them in somewhere where they would be more protected. So like a garage, maybe even a basement, uh, somewhere like that. It would be great if they could get a little bit of light. They won't be actively growing at all. And because of that, there won't be any like stretching for the sun because they're not getting any light. So light does keep things from rotting. So the more light, probably the better, but they won't actually need very much light. Uh, but if you keep that room like above 15 degrees, it should be just fine. Again, it could freeze in there a little bit. Try to avoid heated rooms. Uh, a heated room with a lot of sun might trick your Saracenia into waking up. It might not, because they tell a lot from the, they can tell what time of year it is from the day length. And so they might still stay dormant, 
but you don't want to start waking up again. So try to make sure that some cold gets on it. Um, that's, I think that's about it about as far as bringing them inside. The next majors, oh, keep them watered. We get that question a lot. Do I keep it watered? Yes, always keep it watered. Even if that water freezes, always keep it in the same recommended sitting of two or three inches of purified distilled rain water. You can even melt some snow. Um, the other thing you can do, if you don't have any good place to put them in the ground like this, you don't have any good garage window sill to park it on, you could also put them in the fridge. I know, it's crazy. Put these plants in the fridge, that seems like they're definitely gonna die. We're gonna protect them from the cold by putting them in the fridge. Okay, crazy guy. Not the freezer, the freezer is too cold, but it's funny because we think of the fridge as cold, but the fridge in some places where you guys live is probably, if it's 40 degrees in there, it's a lot warmer than it is outside, especially at night. So, and they're not growing, they're not growing new leaves, so they don't need the light. And most things, like a Venus flytrap, has a little rhizome. So do the American pitcher plants. A temperate Drosera has a hibernacula, whatever that is. And they die back to those things. And so you can put those things in the fridge, and then in the spring, move them back outside, and they'll grow. We'll take you into our fridge in a second here, and I'll just give you like a real quick look at how we do that. Um, but those are three really good ways to keep your carnivorous plants uh, alive in the winter in a really cold, cold place. Which again, I can barely imagine because I'm freezing here and it's probably only 50 degrees. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to take you guys on in really quick and we'll take a look at putting them in the fridge and then we're going to wrap it up. We're back in the greenhouse now in the workroom and it's a little bit warmer in here. Um, so I'm just going to show you really quickly what I mean by the fridge method. And we get a lot of questions about like when to do this. Um, and we get a lot of questions, now I'm in California, you know, how do I make my Venus flytraps go dormant? What's the fridge method? You don't need to do this unless it's really, really cold or really, really tropical. So. If you live in a place like California, don't worry about the fridge method. You're just overthinking it. We love you. Stop overthinking these plants. Anyways, so you want to do it before it gets too freezing cold outside. If you're in this cold area, you don't want to cut it all back too soon because you are going to have to cut. This is an American pitcher plant, believe it or not. And we've cut back all the pitchers. This is the rhizome that it stores energy in to come back in the spring. That's how it's able to die back and come back. And these are its few scraggle roots. So obviously you don't want to do this in May and cut it all back and put it in the fridge. You're going to miss all this growth. So once their growth is pretty much all wrapping up, like usually around Halloween, uh, you want to get it in the fridge before you get any deep freezes, probably colder than 15 Fahrenheit. Anything before that, it's probably not going to hurt anything. In fact, it might be good to get a little cold on it and let it go uh, dormant naturally before you do this process. If it's, you find out there's going to be a freak snap and they haven't had time to go dormancy and they're just going to freeze if you don't do something, because let's face it, the weather's been weird, you can just chop it back and put it in the fridge right away. The plant will adjust. It's a little less than ideal. Better to follow their lead if you can. I don't know what time of year that's going to be for you, but like probably November, December is when you're going to want to do that. And then when to take it out. Well, you don't want to keep it safe from the cold and then put it right back out while it's still freezing. So try to wait until the night temperatures are above 32 degrees. And I know I said they can take it to 15, but the new growth on American pitcher plants and flytraps, sundews, that will burn if it frosts in the spring. So you don't want to take it out too early, have it start to grow, and then you get a late frost and that's going to knock off your Saracenia flowers and set back your flytraps a little bit. So again, watch your weather a little bit. And when the nights stop getting below freezing, time to move them outside into a nice sunny spot. And it's really simple. This one's already been bare rooted and cut back. This is a flytrap plug that's pretty darn dormant. It was big and beautiful all spring and summer and now it looks pretty sad and rough. If you get one from us like this in the winter time, we didn't send you a bum plant. That's just how they look in the winter. They can be a little rough. And so you can see there's just a bulb that's gonna die back to again, a little rhizome, a few little scraggle roots. That's how carnivorous plants are for the most part. It'd be great to wash this in the sink. I'm not going to do it, uh, but it would be great. This is sphagnum moss, long fibered sphagnum moss. 
It's been kind of hard to find in the world these days with supply chain issues, but you can usually still track a little bit down. It's expensive, so you don't want to use a whole lot. And it's damp, not wet. It's like a sponge, and I'm, I'm, there's no water coming out. You don't want it to be sopping, sopping wet. You do want it to be wet enough so that it doesn't dry out in there, but not so wet that it's going to mold. And we use sphagnum because it's really resistant to molding, bacteria, rot. You could use a paper towel if it's all you have to have some moisture, but you're going to find it's all covered in little fungal spots if it didn't rot the plant entirely. So this is better. And then you're just going to gently kind of wrap the roots like that, like that. We'll put a little bit more around this one. Oh, maybe we'll give it a spritz. A little bit more water. And then I'm just going to put it in this bag. That's the bag method. And then, <laughs> make sure you seal it up super well. If it's cracked even in a little spot, it's going to lose all that moisture. You know, it's dry in a fridge. It's cold and dry. Let me take it, toss it in. Oh, geez. <laughs> the vegetable crisper is a good place. Tell all your loved ones what you've done because you don't want your mom or your spouse to come in and they're cleaning out the fridge for New Year's and they're like, what is this? <laughs> Gross. And they throw it away. And there goes all your canoe's plants. Tell everyone that what you've done. I mean, it's gonna be embarrassing, but tell them that you have five trucks in the fridge. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, if not, watch more of our videos, go get our book, The Savage Garden. We're always answering questions you have about canoe's plants.